Hey everyone, today I thought we could do kind of a deep dive into one color you enjoy using in your palette. So I'm just going to demonstrate with my precious Cobalt Violet, but I recommend that you do this with whatever color, well, whatever color you want, but I would say this is a great thing to do with a color you particularly like and you find yourself using again and again in your painting as kind of a main color. So for me, I would go with, you know, either one of my vivid pinks or something like cobalt violet or one of my uh, orangey yellows or something like ultramarine blue or even one of my go-to darks. Uh, dusk pink or moon glow. So just a color that I consistently use. Obviously, if you know, you're just starting out, you might not be as familiar with your color preferences, uh, then I would say start with something kind of basic, like a primary color, and just see what it does. And, you know, I have here on this page 12 little mixing charts. Obviously, if you have a palette that has more than 13 colors, you won't be able to mix all of them on one page. But first of all, you can just print out another page and continue to do this with all of your paints. But if you kind of cover your main color groups, so mix it with a couple of yellows, with a couple of you know pinks, with a couple of blues, a teal, a green, a dark color, if you kind of cover your bases there, you will have a, a more educated guess as to how this paint behaves when you mix it with other colors in your palette. And also, if you're starting out or if you're playing with colors that you might not be so familiar with, this is a great way of really getting to know your paint and its qualities. So every watercolor has several qualities. It can be opaque, it can be semi-opaque, semi-transparent, transparent. It can be staining, non-staining, granulating, non-granulating. Um, and then there's the whole light fast issue, which is not really relevant for color mixing. Uh, but, and there's flow, which again, we're not going to really see it here. I mean, you, we might see that behavior on your palette when you're mixing the colors, but not really on your mixing chart. So I would say probably the more uh, important qualities when mixing colors is the opacity and the granulation. And, you know, if you're mixing two colors that are opaque or semi-opaque, you probably will get more of like a muddy color. If you're mixing only transparent colors, you'll probably get something that is, you know, transparent <laughs> and just less flat, less muddy. Uh, this is not a good or bad thing, or right or wrong. It's just a personal preference. Personally, I actually love to use uh, semi-opaque watercolors and I, I really like sometimes that um, I feel sometimes they can offer some sort of like an earthy grounding muddy element in the best way so for me I enjoy using colors like Naples yellow or buff titanium or my Lucas uh, beloved Naples yellow red these have a bit of op opacity to them and uh, I like that effect so it's just a preference thing um, I think at the beginning of my watercolor journey I heard a lot of I don't want to say noise around me, but I guess I kind of gravitated more towards transparent watercolors and artists that use transparent watercolors. And I kind of got that um, notion that, you know, transparent is good and opaque is bad. But when it comes to artist grade watercolors, you know, it's all good or bad. It just depends what you want. So I definitely have a place for uh, somewhat opaque watercolors in my palette and in my painting, and uh, I think they add something 
unique. So that's just uh, my point of view, but I also like to use transparent watercolor. So it really depends on the watercolor itself. So you can see I mixed my cobalt violet with the top row is Naples yellow. Then we have Nicolazo yellow, a really vibrant, earthy, transparent yellow. Then we have quinacridone gold. And now I'm mixing it actually on screen. It looks quite similar to quinacridone gold, but it's a very different color. It has some granulation to it. It has some opacity to it, which quinacridone gold doesn't have. And uh, I love these mixtures. I love these complementary colors next to each other. I think they just glow together and uh, I use them very, very often in my painting. So cobalt violet mixed with any of my yellows or orangey yellows um, is definitely a go-to thing in my paintings. Here I'm mixing it with buff titanium and I love the results. I find them lovely. So this is just me, but if you don't try, you won't know. And uh, this is a good way and quite fast and you have everything kind of ready for you and then very easy to reference when you need that information. I think this particular page in the printables is really great for that kind of overview and then you can use the ones that have more spaces for the mixes to kind of further explore the colors that you find uh, interesting. And that's the really nice thing about either having the stamps, if you have my stamps or the printables, is that you can just create as many of these pages as you want. And um, also as your collection changes or grows, your preferences change you can keep adding pages. Now I'm doing at the moment just like the one sketchbook, but I'm guessing I probably have enough colors to fill three separate sketchbooks. So dedicate one for the swatches, the second one for mixes, and then a third one for kind of curated color stories and palettes. Um, but yeah, as I said, it's like so customizable and, you know, if you're just starting out, then one sketchbook is probably enough for you. But as you continue to paint, you can change them. And with this particular binding system that I showed you, uh, I show it in the course in more detail in watercolor workbook. Uh, it's shown in more detail, but you can also find this tutorial on my YouTube channel. So you don't have to be in the course to get that. Uh, you can just take the pages out. And so first of all, it's easy to work on them because they're not in the sketchbook. Although here I am working in the sketchbook and it's not a problem, but uh, once it gets crowded, it might be a little bit more challenging. Or if you are using the stamps, then it's definitely easier to get a good uh, stamped image if you're working on a flat surface. So you can just take out the pages and change them, work on them when they're outside of the sketchbook, put them in once you're done. Uh, you can also work on multiple ones and let them dry because you're not bound to that binding. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there? <laughs> so, so many advantages of creating this sort of system and it can change with you as you grow and change. Okay, so here's a really interesting mix. And I love using exactly these kinds of colors in my paintings. Um, the cobalt violet and this is Daniel Smith olive green. They're not completely complementary colors, but they're pretty close. The color you get when you uh, mix them or the color you can get is a very neutral brown, I would say. You can see it in the middle there that when you look at that brown, you can't really tell, oh, this was olive green and cobalt violet. Uh, although I do have to take a closer look, the cobalt violet granulation might be noticeable there. But these are particularly the color mixes that I love because they are um, a bit more un unpredictable. So you, you just kind of mix it and see what happens. But it's more of those slightly muted tones, so not necessarily that brown in the middle, but that slightly muted 
cobalt violet. I really find these shades interesting and I really love looking at paintings, my paintings and other people's paintings and trying to figure out how they got to that color. Um, I just, I, I'm fascinated by color. It's one of the most important elements in my personal painting and enjoyment of the process. And, and so when I see a painting and I can kind of tell, okay, this is burnt sienna, this is ultramarine blue, this is both of them mix, and I kind of know all the color secrets, let's say it like that, it's less interesting to me. So again, you know, art is subjective and I, I personally respond to a certain kind of art, more expressive. I don't like any kind of like hyper realism artwork. I can appreciate the skill, but it doesn't speak to me. And I really love to see, especially with watercolors, those colors, the the way that they separate, the way that they granulate. And I love it also in my paintings. This, that's what gets me very excited a lot of the time is to see these special complex colors that, you know, I feel like I need to document it right away uh, how I got to them because they are just so interesting and mysterious. So that's just my thing. <laughs> okay, here we're mixing cobalt violet with ultramarine blue or French ultramarine. Um, it's just not my, you know, first of all, it's a little bit predictable and these, you might see these colors and say, I love them and that's fantastic. For me personally, it doesn't do much. Um, I get excited when I see that cobalt violet next to like a warm color on the left side there. Uh, on the right side, the mixes with the teal and with that more kind of turquoisey color uh, above the teal. Sorry if that was unclear. Let's start from the top row, the right row. So the first one is olive green, a mixture with olive green, I said that. The second one is Amazonite Genuine, which is a, it's a lovely Daniel Smith color. But personally, I really prefer Cascade Green. I find them very, very similar. Cascade Green is more intense. It's more opaque, but I find the way that it separates and it's not like a genuine color. I think it's just like a mixture of phthalo blue with something, but I just prefer it. I think it's a bit more interesting. That's again, my personal opinion. Uh, and I have right now Amazonite Genuine in my palette and I think soon it will just be replaced by Cascade Green. Um, but yeah, those mixtures and then below that Cobalt Teal with Cobalt Violet, you know, it just doesn't do it for me. There's nothing wrong about it. It's just my personal feelings towards it. Then we have French Ultramarine and underneath that, I think that is Undersea Green. It's a tube in my palette that I need to kind of label more, but I think it's Undersea Green and it actually creates really lovely neutrals that I think would be wonderful in florals. And then the last one is with the Daniel Smith Violet Genuine Hematite, which is just a gorgeous granulating color. And I do like that mixture because the granulation is just really, really interesting. So definitely something I would like to incorporate in my paintings. And yeah, I, I just, I love this page. I love this presentation of all this information. And what you want to make sure is that you document everything, you write down everything. Um, I know people are going to ask. So this particular cobalt violet is actually, I found, you can see it in my palette there on the right. I found a forgotten full pan of my most favorite cobalt violet, which is the Windsor and Newton version of it and I currently use mostly the Rembrandt version but the Windsor & Newton one is my favorite and uh, yeah so that's what I'm using on this page. I think the camera is making it look a little bit more bluish than it really is so you know colors sometimes kind of translate a bit weird on camera 
uh, I feel it's a little bit less blue in real life, this particular cobalt violet. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you will do the same. And of course, you don't need the printables. You don't need the stamps. You can very simply sketch something like this yourselves. I just find the whole structured uh, concept to make things easier for me. And I can spend more time mixing watercolors than, you know, just drawing uh, squares. So that's why I really love uh, both the stamps and the printables. Okay, so let's take a bit of a closer look and talk about the mixtures. I wanted to, just to highlight a few things and also give you some pointers to learning how to somewhat predict what your watercolors can do. Now, obviously, I recommend mixing, trying, but if you have a large collection of watercolors or if you're considering buying some new ones, you can learn a lot from these and make better choices when you purchase new watercolors and thinking about their um, qualities. And I'll show you what I mean. So looking at this, this is now totally personal preference. And I just like what is really drawing me in are these mixtures here. So this is actually Naples Yellow Red from Lucas with Cobalt Violet. And the version I'm using here of Cobalt Violet is Windsor & Newton. I found in one of my palettes uh, <laughs> a full pan, somewhat used full pan. Uh, that is my favorite Cobalt Violet, but I also like the Rembrandt one. I switched to Rembrandt because it's uh, vegan and Windsor & Newton is not, but I do prefer the Windsor & Newton formula. Uh, so that's what I used here. Now, I love all the mixtures with yellows, but you can see here, this is actually something I haven't seen a ton from this particular color, the uh, Naples Yellow Red. Uh, for some reason on this paper, the granulation is very visible. Cobalt Violet is a granulating color. I already know that. Uh, I think all the cobalts are granulating. And I really, really love that combination of the granulating cobalt violet with a granulating orangey yellow tone. Now, colors like quinacridone gold and nicolaso yellow, they're not granulating. So that effect, you will still have the granulation from cobalt violet, but it's not as intense as if you mix it with another granulating color. So what is what this is teaching me is that I should think if I have already in my collection or if I want to add to it a color that is similar to this but has a stronger granulation and I actually do. I have a color called Lunar Earth which is uh, extremely like all the lunar colors from Daniel Smith. It's an extremely granulating color. I have that in my stash. I don't often use it. I think it would be a beautiful combination to use with Cobalt Violet. So I'm just going to make like a little heart here and I can make a mental note to myself or just bring out a tube of uh, Lunar Earth. I don't know what this is. It could be that, I'm not sure. No, this is Sedona Genuine, but Lunar Earth is, it's a very similar color to this one here. It's kind of a orangey, earthy color but something I can still tolerate. Now, these mixtures, they're all pretty. They're all my kinds of colors. I just love this. So this is all good, but I definitely uh, would like to use this enhanced granulation combination. So let's take uh, another look here. So this is another interesting mixture. I'll zoom you in and hopefully I can remember to stay in frame. So this is with another very interesting color from Daniel Smith Violet, uh, Hematite Genuine. You can see it separates and it has this dark granulation. And the mixtures are also very granulating and interesting. So it's also a note to self that when I'm painting and I have in my painting Cobalt Violet, the mixtures I can make of Cobalt Violet with my darker granulating colors, such as I have other ones uh, like Dusk Pink and Moon Glow. 
uh, I know that I'm going to get really interesting effects and it's worth it to keep those in mind. Uh, so this is also to me kind of an interesting effect. Now things that are just like less appealing to me, so these mixes here with the pinks, it's just less interesting. I might use that in a painting when I'm painting florals, but I really try and make every color that I put down on my painting sing to me. Again, personal preference. And so these are just not calling my name. These ones I just love here. Um, this is also interesting. It could also be, you know, a mood thing. I could open this next week and feel completely different. I do like these tones, the slightly pinker blues, uh, whereas this is not really my thing. So, uh, cobalt, cobalt teal and cobalt violet, these two, I love them both. I actually don't really like the combination of them or how they look next to each other. So this is just my personal color craving and I encourage you to do the same for yourself. You know, don't be influenced with, by what other people say because you're the one that has to paint with your colors and you're the one who should love your paintings. So for me, I know that I don't want to put in my paintings these two colors next to each other. I really love both colors and I love to use them in one painting, but I don't want them next to each other. Okay, another um, mix I really, really love is I just have a thing for complementary colors and these are pretty complementary and I just love those colors next to each other. I find them really, really interesting and I love painting florals. So this is a really interesting mixture. You get kind of interesting neutrals here or the semi-neutrals like that slightly toned down uh, cobalt violet. Really floats my boat. Again, it's my own personal thing and I can just make notes to myself so that next time when I'm flipping through it, my eye will just go to the things that I loved. And um, yeah, but obviously, you know, this is a great reference and this is kind of a, a good deep dive into one color. So when you're deciding on color stories and you already have a color that you love in your painting, so for example, cobalt violet, you can flip through this page and kind of take a look and see, oh, what other colors do I like to see with cobalt violet? and you get, you know, in a quick glance, you get a great representation of what it can do with other colors and what interesting mixtures you can get. And again, here, I think what I'm drawn to is the granulation. And, you know, these kinds of colors, they're just so beautiful, so interesting. You will not get this from a tube. And even if you do, it's, it's knowing how to make these that will really help you find your own color sense. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you will do this with, you know, start with one color, pick your favorite color, the one you just always makes you happy. So for me, probably if I did this again, I would probably go with something like um, Bright Rose, my favorite pink, and kind of see what it does with other colors uh, in my palette. Okay, I'll see you in another video soon. Bye.